Hello, welcome to the second episode of Tangent Talk. Um, it's me again, Peter Cooper. And today, I was teasing it on my first episode with Alex. I have... Peter's friend, Cameron. He didn't have to say that first part. <laughs> I mean, yes, uh, Cameron, we've known each other since... Well, I know how we met. Do you remember how we met? Yeah, yeah, no, I, remember, I don't remember when. It was the fall ball. Oh, that was like... Was that after? I think it was... It was before my birthday. So it was probably late October, early November. Yeah, probably around. Yeah. I was going to say November. It was like... You also literally made note, like, how we met. You were just, like, there. Because you weren't at the fall ball. Yeah, I, I was for at the fall ball for, like, ten minutes. Oh. And then I was with... I was actually with Dara and her former friend, Rachel. Oh, damn. And um, there were some dudes there being really creepy, so we left. Fun. Yeah, you guys. At the, well, you're not part of that that Watauga group, but some of the nah, Watauga people. Dude. I love some of them. Dude, the L's like a bubble. It, it Like, some of the people are cool, but it kind of fucking sucks. Yeah. Well, let me explain to our audience uh, really quickly. So, our college campus has basically, like, a castle. Yeah. It really is, because, like, all the really fancy kids who, like, who, like, look good on paper that our college would, like, advertise, probably... They all live in this place called the <laughs> LLC, and the Watauga kids are, like, the fancy ones, but then they also have, like, you, who got randomly placed in there, because yeah, you're lucky so as hell. I'm, like, an outsider. Well, not to, like, I'm not being mean, I'm not calling oh, no, you a I, piece of shit. I, I, I know what you mean. But, okay, so then, so, and Cameron isn't part of that group, he's just, I, like, met him, I have some friends at the Watauga Center, and, and what's even funnier is, they told me, like, today, I introduced one of them to my friend Abby, and she, apparently Abby, she texted me and she was like, she literally said that she knows maybe two people outside of Watauga. I'm like, that's kind of, that's sad. That's, just like, it really is a bubble. It's so weird. Because I was talking to someone in one of my bands, the sax player. She was, she's ex-girlfriends with someone at the L. And like, they're, 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 they're like good. They're right. fine. But she like, was talking to me said, she says to me, is the L still like a bubble? And yeah. I was like, yeah, it totally is. <laughs> I can understand wanting to get like out of that. Yeah. See, I could only imagine how weird it'd be like dating someone in that whole group and then they have like 15 other people who are like great friends with them. I think they're having a, pro someone told me, I think they're having like a weird problem where like, it's like, yeah, one of them's been like going around the L, like some dude, not like trying to, it's not like he's just like a man whore or some shit. Like he's just like literally like, I'm in the L, so all I know are girls in the L. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Well, okay, I was going to actually save for this until a little later, but you mentioned it. Cameron is a well-talented musician. Yay! Yeah. Um, what do you want... Okay, what do you want to start with? I can start with Compo Note. I'll since start that's with like, the main project. Yeah, yeah, Compo the main pro <laughs> project. What is Compo Note? Uh, Compo Note, it's a folk punk band. Right, right. Um, I started it in, like, September. Okay. Because uh, my friend Todd and I, who know we know each other from high school, we went to a show at the borough, and we knew, like, no one there. Love that. Okay. So we were like, this is weird. So we left, and we're like, how the fuck are we going to meet people? And so Todd, Todd and I, we were both in bands in high school, but we were never in a band together, so we were like, oh, let's just start a band. And so we get home, we get, well, I was hanging out in his apartment, and he's like, we need a name. And I saw he had a composition notebook on his floor, and I was like, just like looking at objects in the room, like jokingly saying this should be our name. Right. I was like, what about composition notebook? And then I thought it'd be funny to be like, oh, what about compo note? Just shorten it. Yes. <laughs> and so we looked it up on Rate Your Music. It didn't exist. We Googled it. It didn't exist. That's why I did with Tangent Talk. I'm like, <laughs> let me find the names that don't <laughs> exist. And um, shit, it wasn't on Spotify or Apple Music, so... Now it is. Like, now, now it's on Apple Music. Compo <laughs> Note, that's C-O-M-P-O-N-O-T-E. Look we're, it up. We're doing the same thing when I was recording with Alex. Like, we keep looking to the laptop as if it's a person. It's yeah, so fun. Yeah, I like seeing the The wigs. <laughs> anyway, so Compo Note, Compo we came Note. up with the name. We came up with the name. Then we started the band, and it was around fall break time. Mm -hmm. And so we record. We had, Todd had some material from his older bands that he never used, saved right. on his computer. So we recycled some of that, we wrote some new stuff, and then we recorded it all when we went back home for fall break, and then we came back and we recorded the bass tracks with our bassist Preston, 
and we put it out in January. So that's pretty Their good. EP. Our EP. It's just called EP One. Keep it simple, easy to remember. <laughs> How did you meet Preston? Uh, he. I'm an industrial design major, and so he's also in industrial design. I keep knocking the table. It's fine. Um. And he, uh, we were doing like icebreakers on some, one of the first days of class, uh, and he said he played bass. And he, I knew he li- He also said he lived in Nashville, and so I was like, Nashville's like the music capital of the world. Yeah. And so I was like, I called him after class, and I was like, dude, I'm trying to start a project, and you said you played bass, do you want to come over and jam? Wow. And he did, and he's a really good bass player. Yeah. He's a really cool guy, too. You also have, um, a, well, can they talk about the potential fourth person? Oh, yeah. About? Yeah, yeah. Hyatt, that's a trumpet, our trumpet player, Hyatt. He was at, we played a show before spring break. And we debuted him as their, like, official trumpet player. And he's, like, a fucking monster. I've heard. The trumpet. He's really good. Yes. We played this new song where, like, the whole end section is, like, a jam, sort of. Like, we kind of were just improvising a lot of it over just one progression. Mm-hmm. And, dude, his, like, trumpet playing, he was, like, blasting. The crowd went insane. It was great. I always <laughs> love that because, like, I feel like people who aren't is like exposed to music they're always just like trumpet players going off mm-hmm. what and then like like i mean then you have to think about it like big band back in the day or whatever yeah. trumpet trombone that's like the whole thing obviously you're not that sort of style of music yeah Wait, i mean that'd be cool but... now that i think about it didn't you i think you told me were you were you the one who was in a jazz band at one I, point yeah no yeah. I, I have um my buddies back from charlotte right whenever we come home for break we usually like that's so cool too and it's a good time we play like there's this restaurant called Moochie's Tavern you saw Wait, that yeah, on my that was on your story. oh yeah. my god fuck? I was like I was gonna that's, rest you you know that's like, where I live right yeah that's literally down the street from where I live really Shh. I mean <laughs> no one's funny. gonna see this <laughs> that's hilarious I was like because yeah, I saw it on your story was like Moochie's Tavern we were literally yeah. there we played the open mic there a lot oh I don't like Moochie's yeah the food's not that great Sorry, Moochies. Yeah, Moochies. But Sharon, I don't know, she hangs around the people at Moochies. She's an open mic manager? Yeah, she, it's called Sharon's Jam. She's really cool. Speaking of open mic, let's talk about like Cobble. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cam- I'm not going to like steal the thunder, but Cameron also does, um, which I might start going back into now. But um, there was an open mic night at Noble Cava, which uh, was like my haunt for a while with my friends. And then I just like, were you? Did we just run into each other the first time? Yeah. Like yeah, you. I didn't know you were there, and then you start performing with the open mic manager. Yeah. Uh, Lucas, who I talked about in the last episode very briefly, he runs Depot Street. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's very cool. Like, are you guys? How is that coming along? It's it's good. Um, we jam every Monday night. We really just our main gigs like the Cabo Bar now. Yeah. Um, so we jam every Monday. We come up with like three songs that we're gonna play on Thursday. We play them Thursday, do the same thing. We're kind of just building a repertoire right now, but we might be playing at a frat house yeah, I remember at the end that. of April. Because one of my friends, I ran into him at the dining hall, Central. Mm-hmm. I don't know who's going to hear this. I didn't it doesn't just, matter. I didn't want to just say Central, but I ran into him, and he's like, yo, I saw in your story that you were in a band, and uh, we're trying to get entertainment for our next big party. And I was like, dude... I'll let I'll send you some like videos of us playing if you want us to play at your party. And I talked to him over spring break and he's like, Yeah, you should you guys should get it together and come play with us. That's, or come play at our house. I mean, that's kinda sick because like well, I'm not sure you guys haven't even decided on a name yet. Yeah. But um <laughs> Last week we were the Flat Earthers. I love like, that. Like we change our name each week. I remember I think the first time I saw you was like Mots Sauce. Mot yeah, sauce. Mot sauce. <laughs> I kinda like that one. It's it's catchy. It sounds I, like a, I like the flat earthers too. I honestly. do like flat earthers. Both of, they sound like band camp names. Yeah. Like some randos on band camp. <laughs> oh god. Okay. The frat house frats pay pay pretty good for, for bands too, so you get maybe like two hundred bucks oh out my of god. it. I, ha- I don't even have two hundred dollars. Dude, I have like fifty bucks. So <laughs> I feel you. When I bought you Sonic, I was like, oh crap. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> I don't regret it. I'm not saying, like, how dare you. I'm just like, oh, crap. <laughs> we love not having money in college. I'm beeping now. It's, for, it's part of the culture. <laughs> I'm beeping now for income. Yeah, I saw it. It's, you got back at, like, 1 a.m. I was up to, like, 4.30. Anyway. 
I'm Sims. doing that today. Again. Really? I have, to do this. I have to do this every weekend. What's cool is... is isn't today St. Patrick's Day? No, tomorrow. Oh. Apparently there's a bunch of day parties, but I'm not driving. Yeah, there is one today. Dara's there right now. Uh, Dara was, is his girlfriend. I yeah, that's mention. my girlfriend Dara. Yeah. She's cool. Um, yeah, they're at a darty. I, this is just a stupid term, darty. I, I don't call it that. Day party is the only word. Day party. Uh, I'm just like... It's it's come into my like vernacular just because I've heard so many people say it, but every time I say it, I feel like disgusted. I'm like, I hate that word. It's so stupid. I th- my friend, I had never heard the term because my friend who's a sophomore here, so when she was a freshman, and I was still a senior in high school. She posted a picture and she was like, "Darty," and I'm like, "What the?" F-? I was like, "What's a darty?" And she goes like, "I think it means drug party." <laughs> <laughs> It's like a picture of her boofing, like, Adderall. She's like, darty, she was a drug party. I asked her, I was like, wait, what were y'all doing? She's like, I don't know. No one was doing anything. I'm like, it's not a, a drug, drug, party. drug party. Like, I didn't know what it meant, but now looking back, it's just day party. So who gets drunk? Damn, I think we get drunk at, like, 2. It's literally 2.30 right now. Like, yeah. Why are people getting drunk at 2.30? I, I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, it's just... <laughs> A weird criticism I have. No, it, it it's true. It's, it seems a little strange. Uh, oh, um, I mentioned I wanted I mentioned beeping just because I thought it was funny. Um, beeping is like illegal student Ubering here. Uh, for people who don't know, and uh, you know what's really fun is beeping people to venues is actually really yeah. interesting. Uh, grandma's house. I had to do my first time beeping like a lot. Mm-hmm. Yesterday I was at this hole. In, it was actually really sketch. This hole in the wall. It was a house party, and um, which uh, it was a house show. Or house show, party? house show. Sorry, was it uh, the womb? Uh, we didn't get a name. Do you know like the street it's on? I can tell you that. Do you know who played? No, I, I asked the girl. I literally drove some girls who live here in my hall. I drove them there, and then I drove them back, and they didn't know anyone who played. They were also uh, sufficiently hammered. Uh, I hate that. Like people, there was this one like coked out girl at a show. Who is like grinding on every dude, and all the dudes she chose to grind on were guys at the front. And usually, when you're in the front, you want to hear the music. Yeah. So she was just like pissing off everyone individually. It was like the plague. You see, she'd move from one guy to the other, and eventually she hit me. And I'm like, oh my god, fuck off. That's so. That's... She was like yelling, "Fuck me!" Like at the band members. I'm like, it's funny in like retrospect, but in the moment, you're I was like, like uh-huh. and the guy was like playing an acoustic set, and so she was just being a fucking annoying bitch. And I was all, like, all the house parties, like, I can't, I want to go to more of y'all's shows, but y'all perform at house parties, and I, dude, that's the problem, every show is a, turns into a party. And, and I have, uh, physical contact issues, so I don't like being, like, yeah, touched. Yeah, no, like So, that. and I was at their first show, their, Todd, their lead, uh, thrashed into me, that was funny. <laughs> yeah. And he also, his finger bled out. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Um, but, that wasn't too bad, too, because there was space, mm-hmm. and I was at the front-ish. Especially when you guys performed, I, like, asked. I was like, hey, could you guys move? This is yeah. my friend's band. Um, but, at th- like, house parties, there's this girl, uh, other girl who was in my hall, like, down the hall from me. Mm-hmm. She, like, came back in October, and she, and she was like, her foot was bleeding. And we're like, what happened? <laughs> She's like, we were in a mosh pit. That's funny. And I'm, <laughs> it's funny in retrospect, but, man, I can't do it. I don't know, I like mosh, and whether or not I get hurt. I, like, broke my ankle, and I still fit in a, <laughs> was in a mosh pit. Oh, that always reminds me of, like, Florence, who I have here, right here. Uh, Florence, she broke She broke her, uh, she was performing at Coachella. Why? Um, and apparently she, like, jumped off the stage, broke her ankle, oh ran God. across the thing, and didn't know she broke her ankle until, like... Didn't like, Justin Bieber do that, too? Did he? I think he did. Didn't, like, Lady Gaga do that? I, th- I think. Speaking of Lady Gaga... Dude, Lady Gaga's dope. That's what I was like. I was talking about this with a friend of mine. I'm like, you were the last person I'd ever be like. I love Lady Gaga. Dude, her. I'm not like shaming oh, you. No, no, I know, no, no. I know, I know. But um, I think I think like Dar- I was talking about this with my girlfriend Dara, and <laughs> she's like, "Why do you like Lady Gaga and not like other pop music?" And I was like, "Cause Lady Gaga's like real." Like, An she artist. did crazy shit. Like she did the meat outfit. She came out of the egg at the Grammys. Like. You could tell she cared about her art, and she was just doing it, like, through pop music. And, like, a lot of pop music, you get that thing where it's just, like, soulless. Like, mm-hmm. you could tell, like, the person behind it, she didn't give a shit. Like, or he or she didn't give a shit. Like, she just had 15 different writers write this song, and then they came out with it. 
the the record company came out with it with their name. She was what? She's a NY. She was a, some New York art school graduate. Lady Gaga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like a smart woman. She's too. very smart. But I'm, and and so it's. I don't. You're literally. I'm not even kidding. I don't know a single girl who likes Lady Gaga. You're the only person. Really? I know. Yeah. I'm not like shitting on her. It's just like out of anyone I know, I know like. Two gay dudes and you, <laughs> <laughs> and and and, and and like those guys are the people who are like buy art pop on iTunes and shit like that. How do you feel about her transition now then? Like to acting? I just meant or, in general, like her light, latest music. Um, I haven't really. I like that song a million reasons, but mm-hmm. I didn't listen to the whole album. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't really. I was really only exposed to Lady Gaga's older stuff because my older sister's like loves Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. Um. And, like, looking back on all that stuff, I, I used to hate it because it was like, oh, my older sister likes it, so I have to hate it. But um, being, like, a musician now and, like, able to appreciate shit in, like, more detail, um, Lady Gaga had some really good stuff. Like, the song Bad Romance, mm-hmm. it's a great song. <laughs> See, look like, at that. It's such, like, a great, just, like, pop anthem. It's such a good thing to be on the radio. That's that's interesting. No, I'm just, I'm interested because, like, I've never thought I'm not, I've never thought of Lady Gaga like I definitely was on that when it, when it was happening I was definitely on that band of like she's crazy like what is she doing yeah. coming up out of an egg or dressing in like drag at like the thir- 2013 Grammys yeah when she yeah. sang uh sing you and I I think that was a bad song sorry I I don't even remember how it goes <laughs> I don't like it so I I actually not to bring up Florence again this will be the last time I swear mm-hmm. but I do have beef with her Lady Gaga Cause, yeah. um, and, and I'm glad I'm not the only one either in like the Florence the Machine fan group. I thought I was the only one on that last album, the one with her like profile and that big ass hat. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called. Jolene? I don't know. Um, what it's called. She, there's a song called Hey Girl on it with Florence Welch, frontman for Florence the Machine. Yeah. So fucking bad. It's yeah. like actually, there are very few songs where I'm like, this is bad music. Mm-hmm. It's awful. And I'm like, why would you desecrate her good name, <laughs> Lady Gaga? Like, I don't have much beef with you, except now I do. So. Wait, but wouldn't Florence also have to have agreed to yes, be on this Yes! I'm mad at her for that, too! <laughs> oh, like, okay. Like, she was, like, advertising it. She's like, yeah, hey, guys, like, I have this new song, Lady Gaga. Like, I'm recording it with her, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this is bad. Like, you, you listened to this and thought it was good. There's another song I'm not too crazy about, I Love You All the Time by Florence and the Shane, but it's not bad. Anyways, yeah. Bad. Let's move on to something else. Unless you want to keep talking about music. Like, I mean, I can talk about music all day, but if you if you want to move on to something else, I want to I want to like experiment a little with the podcast. So, like the last time, me and Alex were just we just kept going on weird yeah. stuff. I want there's some I've been having like things are on my mind. I normally like ask people, and so lately, <clears throat> my my counselor, haha, we've been talking about having taking risks. And I was like, try. I'm trying to take more risks, and they're unconventional risks. Like my idea, for instance, in relationships, I'm always the pursuer. Like I'm always a very forward person, and my risk is sitting back and letting things happen. And like I'm not looking for a relationship now. I'm just like chill. Um, nothing's happening, but like whatever. Like I'm comfortable with that now. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what is what 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 risks are you are you are you trying to take now because i mean college is a transformative time yeah i know i know mm. that's not a really fun question to ask no, it's loaded it's interesting it, it is like um what what's what risk is preventing i don't want to say preventing you because that's implying that you're not moving forward but like you know like what's a risk you have to take that you haven't taken yet to progress with whatever your artistic endeavors with music or in college or trying to figure out what you want to do with your life risk that i haven't taken yeah um hmm. <laughs> you weren't prepared for this i was not that's that's a good question uh i think um like with my major it's like a really intensive mm-hmm. major and i kind of haven't really t- taken the deep dive like some of the other students i i have interacted with in industrial design and that is definitely a risk that i need to, it's not even like really a risk it's just something i need to do like I, i'm thinking i might have to like slam myself with summer classes next year just because mm-hmm. like it's so many there, there's so much shit to learn in industrial design like there's materials and stuff there's finishing metal work and all that stuff isn't required for the major but it's all stuff you need in like your head to 
be a good design, like product designer. And I feel like that's just definitely something I, I, I really need to do, but am like afraid to, because I'm like, then I don't want to have free time, but I just got to get away from the fact like, I'm not a fucking kid anymore. So, you know, I got to work. Yeah. I, I know. I actually understand that. Not in terms of like academics, but, um, um, so I've been on this weird manic phase. Like I've just been like pumping out we, like a lot of creative energy, which is good. Mm-hmm. Like I had that picture. That's a risk for me. I don't like creating things because I'm afraid of making them bad. Yeah. But I've learned that I'm still learning, but I'm learning that your first draft for something isn't going to be your best. So like I've been this is my artistic notebook. It's very special. I'm just gonna I'm not trying to show it. It's a nice sketchbook. It is, it's very nice. I've had this forever. Um, I like I like sketchbooks I don't have the spiral down. Oh but they're always more expensive. They are so expensive. Um so I have a bunch of lyrics but I'm not trying to show you, but I'm trying to show an example of like I used to draw <laughs> Pokemon. Um sorry. <laughs> I don't like showing yeah. the Pokemon drawings. Um because I don't do them very often. But um I'm trying to show like I used to draw a lot. Yeah. I was with the art kids, um, and then I stopped in high school because I do it every so often when I'm like inspired. Um, actually, I think I have one like an example of like my weird burst of inspiration through college. Yeah, I was listening to the Florence and the Machine album, and there's this one song. I think it was a hundred years, and I drew this, and I never finished it because the legs are disproportionate, and I, I'm not. I am a perfectionist, mm-hmm. but um, I was like kind of proud of that, and um, I got so. Yeah, I'm like awful at fucking drawing. I can draw like buildings and people. Just, it's not you. People, I I like like when I do it. I, it just takes so much energy for me to draw people. Cause like AP art, I always avoided drawing people. <laughs> I I am the same way with um facial details. Yeah, I, I actually like drawing faces. I just don't like drawing bodies. <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna actually. I know this is not this is an audio podcast. This is not exactly the best medium yeah. to show this, but um. You guys can follow my art page that I just opened. This is another risk thing. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to actually put out my art. I don't, I'm not too proud of it. It's not something I ever see myself in a career doing. Mm -hmm. I'll plug that at the end. But, um, uh, so this was my first drawing of my friend Chandler and me. And, uh, it turned, it was just me driving. And then it turned into, I'm going to drive Chandler. And then this is just something like, I have a quote book of all the stupid things we said. And like, that's one of them. That's, I didn't draw that. That's my friend Hannah's. Um, and then, so, like, this was one day. And Hannah, I was, Hannah lives in the L, right? Yeah, Hannah Higley. Is she... She's roommates with your RA. Yeah. I knew when you posted the, those drawings. I, I've always, I see her... She has, like, I guess an 8 a.m. art class, and I always see her carrying art, and I'm like... And she's, s- she's really fucking good. She's... She had this giant yes. portrait of a... I saw her carrying that. I when like, Damn. that drawing in that book, we were she was doing that, like, while I was in the room. She's... What? Is that charcoal or is it pencil? Charcoal. Yeah. She is an fantastic like artist. She's a fine arts major. Or? She is an art education. Art educate. Okay. She yeah. is like crazy. Yeah. Good. No, I've seen her work. It's it's really nice. Sorry. Um. Oh, so improvement. Like I. Oh crap! I just broke the hinge. Yeah. Look! Look that. That's my finger. Sorry. Um. So that was like this was literally one day, and I was really proud of myself because like, that's just a lot of detail work that I did. My Hannah was, like, nutting over her legs. She's like, oh, my God, those legs. I was like, what? She was like, the positioning is perfect. And, like, I don't see it, but I am, like, proud of myself. I like my leg, my legs better. But um, this, but that's not actually what I want to show. I just wanted to, like, sh- brag about my art. So this is my friend Felicia and uh, my friend Jordan. Um, Jordan, that looked exactly like him. Felicia, I don't like this drawing. They call me Peeber and Peebus. Um... So then, this was two a two-day gap between this and then the second drawing, which is Chandler again, and that's Felicia. And, like, I've been, like, I know this isn't a big deal, but to me, this is, like, risk-taking. Yeah. Like, like, I don't like doing creative work because I'm afraid that someone's gonna not look good. Oh, sorry. No, it's all good. So, no, yeah. Dude, fucking, I, like, need to carry, like... I carry, I got these, like, little, mole, you know the comfy moleskin, right? Yeah, I have a moleskin notebook in my bag. Yeah, I got, like, they sell, let me see if I have it in here. Dude, they sell these tiny-ass little notebooks. Oh, my God. For, for those listening, this is, like, three inches by four inch little sketchbook. 
I just carry shit. I carry it around and like draw stuff. Wow. I drew that a couple days ago. It's, no, it's VR headset. That? I think it says. Oh, <laughs> I remember this. This is from Thursday. What's it I say? I was um, you know Dawson who goes to the open mics. Yes. He hosts a jam session at his house every Thursday too. And people, oh. you just go and get high. And I, I mean, was, <laughs> I was thinking about VR and I was thinking like, th- so the notebook here says VR headset marketed towards stressed people. <laughs> and I was thinking like, cause you know, how VR hasn't really taken off Yeah. just because it's so expensive. And like a lot of people say, you know, it's cool for like a couple hours. I was thinking, what if like you take a VR headset, but you don't market it towards like gaming, you market it as like a product for like, you put it on your transported to like a nature scene right. if you're like stressed out or some shit in it's kind of a stupid idea but i feel like it could be like one of those things that are dumb but like sell well personally for for me oh god i got this stupid comment today where it was like i was like i'm actually really anxious right now i'm sorry and they were like oh this guy was talking to me he's like you don't have to feel anxious around me i'm like it's not how it <laughs> works I don't, so I'm like, I'm like, dude, depression just goes away. Yeah, I just, I'm like, dude, like, I get it. Like, I don't need to be, but my anxiety doesn't care. But yeah. for that, I'm just like, wouldn't that work? I, I get my, like, vibe scene is, like, in a rainstorm. So it'd have to be, like, good sound, too. Yeah. That ASMR sound. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> it sounds so stupid in my headset right now. Oh, my God. My friend, <laughs> have you seen the videos of the women with the giant lobsters? The H three video, yeah, well, dude. I he, oh, yeah, he did do a video on it. Yeah. Oh my god, it's like <laughs> fucking lobsters like this. It's like four feet long. Like, that video, I was like <laughs> wheezing. I thought the video was so funny. I haven't watched it yet. I just I've seen the original. They have like, like the bucket of butter sauce next to them too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the oh my it's god the sound of it snapping it yeah and then me. like the claw is like this big it just takes a giant bite out of it <laughs> oh you can't even eat that it's uh, yeah <laughs> for real that's that's why I watch them because it's like fantasy like, right I always want what I can have. yeah I want a woman to break a lobster leg right in front of me a lobster claw <laughs> oh god no um I was my, the risk I'm taking, I'm starting a mukbang channel. I'm going to be eating giant amounts of food. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do a Wataga. A Wataga <laughs> talk show. Mukbang. Dude, wait. <laughs> I got it. Wataga, we can combine my podcast with Jacob's podcast. He's yeah. in a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's a Wataga thing. And you just mukbang. Yeah. <laughs> mukbang and talk. Just eat. But, like, it's not even video. It's audio just eating sounds. <laughs> It, it, I saw I the Pringles. I saw he's about to pull them out and go crunch. <laughs> I'm actually fucking joking. Oh my god. I hate that noise. Like I'm not mad, but like ASMR people are like the most like ASMR girls are like so obnoxious. Not the ones who do it, the commenters. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, oh my god, I totally feel it. Like they're orgasming. Like they're yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the the yeah. first who coined the term ASMR. ASMR stands for autonomous sensory, sensory. meridian response. Yeah. I'm not sure what meridian means, but the person who coined the term thought it meant orgasm, which Love I know it doesn't. <laughs> but I don't know exactly what it means, but. It, doesn't mean orgasm. <laughs> uh, well, have you? Oh damn it! I had a, a thought and it left me. Oh my god! It was it was funny. It was about it, not commenters. It was commenters on videos. Oh god! You, it wasn't that. So I was thinking. Sorry about <laughs> annoying commenters. And I was thinking, I, you want to know like this weird saying that everyone's having lately that I can't stand. It was more like a few months ago. Mm-hmm. It's those people who are like those girls usually who like have smoked weed once. And they're like, you want to know what's crazy? I made a tweet about this. I was like, you want to know what's crazy? Like, your pink and my pink might not look the same. Like, we all call it the same pink, but like... Sorry, I had this idea when I was high. high. Like, like, I'm like, shut the fuck up. I've gotten high before, and let me tell you, it was awesome. 
crazy, dude. Like, oh my I'm just God. so wild. I think I greened out. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the and like I'm colorblind, man. So like I know what the fuck. Like I know when people are BSing me with that sort of thing, and I'm like, dude, all right. Here, here's a, here is, this is not where I expected to go, but, like, here is a quick, like, anatomy lesson, and I am shit at science, so I'm surprised I know this. Um, you have cones in your eyes, and, like, we all probably have the same red, green, blue cones, so we relatively see the same color. I'm sure if we decided to all die, and, like, someone dissected our eyes, we'd have the same cones. And, like, I, I, maybe it's different, like, how your neural transmitters accept the information but like i really highly doubt that this table is not black to you or my black like wait this is black fuck off <laughs> i hate you so much god you really thought you were like yeah i'm a, I'm a totally gonna troll him i'm I, that was like an epic troll an epic that meme. was a gaming epic troll a gaming, moment a gaming <laughs> meme. God. i haven't even i'm like the worst gamer ever <laughs> Really? I don't play any... Aren't you an Elite Smash for Palutena? No, I was. <laughs> I haven't played Smash Brothers anymore. Oh, why and not? Because I've been busy having a oh, manic... I thought you said you don't play it anymore. <laughs> I haven't been playing it. Okay. I've been busy because I've been having a manic creative episode. I'm, pr- I'm trying to see... Um, the. So I actually ran into Cameron. Um, they're having one tomorrow, by the way. They're, uh, they have, like, Smash tournaments at our campus every other Sunday. And... Um, just randomly wound up Cameron was attending to one that I go to because my friend across from me uh, he's like a really good Super Smash Brothers player and I'm like his cheerleader and I'm, I'm considering having him on soon as well but um, uh, where was I going with this oh he I'm also going to draw him because he always makes fun of me and how I play Smash Brothers because I'll play with him he's like stop because this character Palutena can warp that's like her recovery if she falls off the stage she'll warp and, like, I do it towards the center of the stage all the time. He goes, stop warping to the center of the stage. I know that's going to happen. Like, I'm going to get you when you do it. I'm like, but it looks so cool. <laughs> and um, so I, I I haven't been playing Super Smash Brothers or any video games, really, except for I bought Okami and I just finished it. Dude, Okami is so good. So good. I played it on, it was on the, it was on the Wii, mm-hmm. too. Yeah, I played it on the Wii. It, wasn't it also on PS2? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh but when they re- announced, they announced Okami HD in the same direct that they announced Smash Bros. Yes. Yeah. Dude, that was like, my heart was, I was going to have a heart attack. My first beeping paycheck was, paycheck, um, was, was I bought. You bought Okami? Yeah, I was, um, I, I had, there's this person who plays video games who I sometimes watch. He's the only person I ever watch video game yeah, Let's is Players. It? Chugga Conroy. I don't know who that is. Yeah, he's not, he's actually, I, I should, he's like. He cares about video games, and I, like, kind of respect that because he treats it like, like, art. And it's yes! That's awesome. So, uh, he loves that game, and, and I had never played it, and I didn't want to get spoiled on the story too much, so I was like, I never really delved into it, and then I was like, I'm never going to play it because they're never going to re-release it, and then they did, <laughs> and I was like, all right, perfect, I'm going to play it on the Switch, and I did, and that's probably the last game I'll be playing in, like, three months because I don't care. I, I grew out of video games. Really? I kind of did. I'm, like, turning into an old buddy-duddy. I'm not looking the new Pokemon games. I'm, like... Mm. Dude, Sword and Shield looks sick. I See, but you say he treats it like art. I, I have, like, a similar approach to games. Because, like... Like you said, you grow out of games. It's, like... I don't know. I, I don't think I'll ever grow out of... Because, like, I won't grow out of movies. I won't grow out of, like, books. I won't grow out of, like, music. You know I, what I mean? I, I just, like, view it as just another medium to tell a story or something. I don't, I'm not saying, like, I, I don't want to be. It's just, like, I, like I'm not a big fan of how they're changing Pokemon, for example. I'll always probably like Mario games. Like, I've always loved those. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm definitely not going to, like, grow out of it completely. It's just my tastes are changing towards nothing. Like, I don't like most PC gaming, uh-huh. so I'm usually with my Nintendo Switch. Okay, yeah, but that makes sense. Art, like, what he does, Trigger Corn, right? I met him once, actually. Um, he does Where'd you meet him? Uh, when I was... Jesus, 14, um, my mother wanted to take me to Washington, D.C. because my 8th grade class all went to Washington, D.C. And she's like, I can do that for cheaper and we could have fun together. <laughs> and so she took me there and coincidentally, uh, the Pokemon brand was doing like an orchestral, it wasn't that cool. Oh, like I remember thing. when they were on tour. I was going to go see that. I went to the first showing in America. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm not kidding. Like, 
that was the only reason why is because Jack Connor is gonna be there. <laughs> and I met him, and I was like, really. Well, I've always been insecure by my appearance, but I've been better now. But back then, I was super insecure in my appearance, so I didn't take a picture with him. I took a picture of him. <laughs> And then my old iPod. Did you touch. ask him? You said, "Can yes. I take a picture of you?" <laughs> oh God! I was like fourteen. That's so funny. <laughs> I was fourteen and an idiot. Like, but the way he to to cycle back, the way he treats like over, or games as like an art is like, um, he a lot of people play games like blind. Like that's the thing they don't know what they're getting into, and they're like, "I've heard a little bit of this." Like, mm-hmm. um, or or you have like commentators like the Game Grumps or whatever. I'm not really into those people. He is like crazy informative. He about like games production. He'll give you a lot of fun facts about it. He'll be like, "Here's some things that you might not know about this video game that you can do with it." Uh, doesn't sound that interesting, but like, like, uh, and unfortunately, I can't watch him every single day like I used to because he'd release a video. I mean, he'll take breaks between games, but he'd release a video every single day, and like. I do get tired, but um, I still respect him. Like I, I as a person in the gaming community. <laughs> it's weird. That's why I think like games haven't really, in like culture, haven't really progressed. Is because there's like a community. I like like there's no like there's like a film community, but there's not like a movie community. Like everyone watches movies. I feel like gaming, it's kind of going away because it's become like cooler, but. There's, like, a stigma attached to it, sort of. Like, oh, you play video games, you okay, that's fucking true. nerd. But, like, I think it's it, it's sort of going away, because, like, I so disagree. many, like, cultural influencers are, like, big gaming fans. Like, Drake plays a lot of video games. Um, I know a lot of people in the NFL play video games. I think that's indicative of it being more modern. Yeah, I, that's, I, that's what I'm saying. It's sort of uh, starting to go away. Oh, it's, like, losing its niche. Yeah. Uh, it's I'm becoming like, more, like... Not, I want to say accepted. I want to I mean, mainstream. Like, more mainstream, yeah, which is a good thing. But also, like, to people who might appreciate it, they're not going to have as much fun with the people who are, like... Which is fine, but, you know, just people who, like, oh, I like video games. Like, they're not, like, caring about Well, th- there's, there's, like... You'll always find people who care yeah. a lot about any... Like, my friends and I, we discuss movies all the time. Like, not everybody goes super in-depth in, like, like film and, like, what makes, like, the editing great and stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is, like, again, it's, like, fine. I'm not, like, not every yeah. fan of, of, like, someone has to know everything about it, but... Um, it loses its, like, spark, sort of. Like, a little a little bit. I get it. Yeah. Because that's, like, with me and music. But that's the thing. The more, the easy, like, with, especially with, like, the internet, it's so easy, so much easier to make something. So, like... There will always be like special things being released. Like the, the indie game community is like crazy. Like there's so much creativity in yeah. like underground video games and like underground music and even like independent movies. There's just so much creativity happening. And it's like easier to find because it's not like the 90s. If you make an indie movie, you have to release it on VHS and you're like hometown. You can like release it on YouTube and have potentially millions of people see it. Well, you know the game. I'm a brag. Um, you know the game Shovel Knight, right? Of Worse. Okay, so that game has had been in development for a very long time. Yeah. Um, I think I was literally thirteen when it was first being in development. So that's and we're. It was, I'm it was, it's like one of the only successful gaming kickstarters too. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I was a part of it. That's dope. And not just a part of it. I thought Kickstarter page is still up. You can find my name on their really? page because I was thirteen, and it was actually funny enough a drawing. I came up with, like, my... You know how there's, like, Boss Nights or whatever? Yeah, yeah. I came up with my own little thing of Boss Nights. And That's it's a cute cool. drawing. And I sent it to them. And they published it because they were, like, no... Like, this person went above and beyond. That's and I was cool. so honored. And because of that, um, I had already donated. And I won, like, the tiering of, of a different donating. And so they combined it to, like, $70. And the $70 donors and above could watch, like, live streams of the game being made. That's cool. And so there's, there's this one... Um, I a fan created this. There's this one move that the under treasure knight, he opens up a tr- a treasure chest and there's a whirlpool that sucks shovel knight into it. And like a fan, not me, but some fan. I remember hearing it. Some fan had come up with that, and so it's just like no one's ever gonna know that except for maybe me yeah. and like ten other people um, who were watching the live stream. That's that's so cool. So so like I wish I had that. Like I unfortunately don't have that enthusiasm like I do with games anymore. Um, 
I don't know. I'm not really... It's, it's, it's kind of like I'm not upset, but I am a little sad because it's just like, oh, man, I hope I'm not getting old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 19. It's also... But um, they speaking of God, the developers of Cook Games, they just tweeted like a picture, and they're it looks like they're about to reveal like a new game entirely, mm-hmm. which is good. Oh yeah, yeah. Shovel Knight's their only game, right? Yeah. And they released like four DLCs or something. Yeah, and like they definitely milked the crap out of Shovel Knight because he's in like every indie game. Yeah, there he was in fucking Smash Brothers. He is he. In Smash? He's an assist trophy. He is. That's that right. That made me like tear up a little bit. That's crazy. Um. Sorry. And he's also, uh, he's in Ukulele, mm-hmm. which that game's not that good. <laughs> That's a shame. Which it is a shame. But, like, that just, like, did you see the Donkey video about it? I don't like him. I love Donkey. I want to like him. Why don't you like Donkey? I just don't, I don't know. I, I, there's every, everything about him I should like because I like that sort of humor, too. Yeah. I just, I guess I just haven't gotten the time to, like, watch six videos of his and, like, <laughs> actually like him. His videos are short should do them. Well, I also like longer videos. I don't like, like, six-minute videos because oh, yeah. I'm like, I don't think you're doing enough. It's it's kind of like, I'm like, I think you could squeeze this. More more shit, more, yeah. more humor, more analysis, whatever. Um, but he, he uh, posted a video about ukulele, and he was like, if you just want to play a good 3D platform, just fucking play Banjo-Kazooie, because yeah. that's pretty much what ukulele is trying to emulate. Yeah, it really was, which is not, like, a bad thing. Yeah, It was no. inspired by Because, I mean, I love 3D platform. That's probably, like, one of my favorite genres of games is the 3D platformer. Yeah. Like, Mario Odyssey. I was about to ask. It's like my favorite game of last year. Or, two e- oh my god, 2017 that game came out. I don't even know. Are they still in my backpack? What? Oh my god, they are. The boxes? Yes, I took yeah. them over for spring break, and I was like gonna pull one out and check when it came out. 2017, yeah. Jesus. It's about, it's yeah, Breath of the Wild came out two years ago. It came I, out in March. I forgot it, it was March on 3rd. the Wii U. Yeah, dude. My friend owns it on Wii U, and I always make Why? fun of him. He doesn't, he doesn't have a Switch. He plays Breath of the Wild on Wii U. Like, I, I, gross. I busted out the Wii U over spring break because I was feeling like playing Super Mario Maker. Yeah? I love that game. Super Mario Maker 2 is coming out. I'm so excited. Dude. I have no money, literally. And now, like, fucking Nintendo lifted their dog shit regulations on social media. Yes! And that, ga- that game's going to take over Twitter. It's going to be awesome. Okay. Twitch is insane. Like, that's why I said, by Twitch the way, when you're great. talking about, like, oh, I think gaming's losing its niche, I'm like, I disagree, because Titch... T- titch. Oh, no, it's, I'm not saying it's losing its niche, it's just gaining more mainstream. I know, it's just like... Dude, but, like, Twitch, definitely. That is... Do you know how, like, profitable it is? I was listening yeah, to some podcasts... Yeah, crazy. And they did the math, and, like, they were, like, Ninja was making, like, literally, like, $300,000 or something a day or some shit. I was watching this guy, Etika. He's street... He's... Yeah, you know? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, I was watching one of his streams, and he was... He got, like, a $1,000 donation, and I'm like, dude, that's, like, rent and food for your month, and he lives in an apartment... <laughs> Well, he lives in New York, too, so he's probably, like, yeah. I'm making... He's probably not making that much money. <laughs> Maybe he is. Um, he doesn't even play games. He just, like, yeah, fucks, just around. fucks around. <laughs> I was watching his Dark Web stream. <laughs> I, I haven't... I know he just started streaming again. Yeah, he went, like, kind of... Yeah, he went, like, he really take a weird break. for a while. Yeah, he was, like... he. I guess he was, like, rebranding himself, but it doesn't... I'm not yeah, trying he to... he did not rebrand himself. Yeah, it's I'm like not trying to... Same, he's just on his exact same shit. I'm not trying to, like... Merc on it. I'm just saying, it was like, I don't see oh, no, the difference. I, I didn't want it. I kind of read Me neither. I, I like Attica as he is now. I, 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 I've only watched of his streams with his new, like, resurgence was when him on the Nintendo Direct. <laughs> just, like, him and his weird friends. Dude, sometimes, like, if I just want to, like, feel good, I'll watch compilations of the reactions to people the watching Smash the Brothers. Smash Brothers Direct or the, the one where they announced Smash with the Inkling trailer. <laughs> Like, when that got... Oh, my God. Thinking about it just gets me so happy. Because when that shit got announced, I was, like... I was, like, freaking out. It was, just like... Nobody... It was so out of left field. I, That's what I like about Nintendo is, like... Every gaming company, they make their big announcements at, at E3. E3 exclusively. But E3 is, like, just a, a, a bigger version of what Nintendo does throughout the year. Because they do the directs, like, every couple months. And so, like, seeing such a huge announcement like that in, like, fucking a nothing time of year. Like, nothing happens in March. Like, and they just announced the biggest game. It, it sold, like, 9 million in, like, two weeks yeah. or something like that. 
It was the fastest selling sw- Switch game. I know it broke like like not only a Switch record. It I broke think it's like, like an all time gaming record. Yeah, I think it was sure. like one of the fastest selling games yeah, of it, all it, time. I think in three weeks it got to twelve, so, fifteen million, something like that. Which is weird. Like, I guess it's because the Wii U didn't sell as many units initially yeah. as the Switch did. So I guess like a lot of people have a Nintendo Switch compared to the Wii U. And so it was easier for people to get Smash Brothers. Yeah. And um, I think Nintendo Nintendo's marketing for the Wii U was dog shit. It was so bad. And I think they're doing so much better with the Switch. And so, like, more people know about the Switch. Mm-hmm. So the more, pe- more people know about Smash, and they're like, I'm buying a Switch just for Smash. Because I got the Switch when, it, like, the day... I got Switch, my Switch day one. Same. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice. I always... If I... I have... I literally can't think of... It. Besides, like, Okami, which I wasn't really... I was like, I'm going to wait because I didn't have enough money, like a mm-hmm. lot of money. I always buy things day one. Yeah. Smash Brothers, the Switch, Mario Odyssey, po- Pokemon, every single time. <laughs> oh, I love Pokemon. Um, and like, I, I was bringing it into school because it, oh, no. dude, it was like junior year and the latter half of the semester, I had nothing to do in class. So I was just like in school playing it playing Zelda and like there were like 15 people who would be like oh is that a Switch dude I'm waiting for Smash and like I I can't even imagine how many people there were just like being like I'm just waiting for Smash to come out See, to un- buy a Switch unfortunately especially since the latter half of high school I definitely like put myself in like like this insular like me myself and I sort of thing not even just selfish it was just all of my friends were older than me and they were starting to graduate I was cutting off my old friends just because I wasn't actually friends with them and so, unfortunately, I don't know what it's like with the Switch, because when the Wii U was out, it was, Nintendo was back on its wave of, like, Nintendo's for little kids, blah, 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 it's bullshit, and now, like, the Switch came. And I, because I remember I brought my 3DS one time on the school bus, and everyone made fun of me. Really? Yeah. I, Dude, I, all I, that shit's getting, like, popular. I like, see these white boys walking around with Rugrats shirts, and, like, 90s nostalgia shit, oh, and Nintendo yeah. has kind of been lumped in with that, so, like... Nintendo is, like, cool now. They're, like, on the shit. I'm still, like... I unfortunately still have that, like, stigma. Not, like, for me, but I'm so afraid. I don't like talking about video games that much because I'm just afraid I'll be lumped in with the people you'd see at most Smash tournaments. Yeah. I won't, like, Hey, there's cool people. At there are. Tournament. And at, at ours, <laughs> they're really nice. Like, there's only, like, one or two people I have any problems Dude, with. Dude, at Glitch... It was surprising. I went there. Yeah, dude, there were like six hundred people. All everyone I met was cool. It was I was like expecting. I didn't, I had never been to a super major tournament like that, mm-hmm. and I I didn't know what to expect. I thought there'd be like really just like antisocial people, but everybody was there just talking about, just not even like Smash, just talking. It was really cool. Which might be there were people from their high school football teams there, and he's like, dude, I missed practice to come here. I'm like. That's fucking awesome, dude. That, like, makes my heart. I think, and maybe it's 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 a reflection of, you know, Nintendo's cool again. Yeah. People who are it's anti... Great. People who were generally antisocial have, like, found a more social circle that yeah. allows them to shower still. <laughs> <laughs> not to, like, get on them, but... We ha- I those, have not... Those memes are funny as fuck. Well, it's not even, a, like, it's a meme, but, like, there was a problem. I mean, it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like people at Smash Runners wouldn't shower, which is <laughs> gross. People at all gaming tournaments wouldn't shower. God, I am, competitive gaming is, like, I can't do it. I, I yeah, my friend wants I, me. Beyond Smash, I'm not, like, into it. My friend across the hall really wants me to try commentating, because, I mean, I work in radio, I'm audio broad, broadcasting. For Smash? Yeah, and I, be, I did, like, cool. some practice runs, like, and I was like, okay, I don't know much, but like I was pretty good, yeah. I think. Um, but I, I I tried like watching other people in other games, and like there are some like toxic players. Like there's this. It's like not even like Smash doesn't have as many toxic players, which but like is good. Street Fighter. That fucking... Dragon Ball Fighters game is what I'm thinking of. DV Fighters. Yeah, this like the number one dude is like an asshole. Apparently. Yeah. Um. I don't fucking know dude, League of Legends is toxic. <laughs> Like, if you're a beginner and you go to a Smash tournament, everybody's going to be, like, giving you pointers, being like, oh, let's get in a couple games, we'll show you what to do and how to think. But, like, you go, you play, like, League of Legends online, and you're not that good. <laughs> you get, like, sh- shit on. Because isn't it a team-based game slightly? Like, team yeah. based That's the problem. Yeah. It's a team-based game. Like, Overwatch, I got that same thing. 
I had to like learn from, and I don't even play it anymore, but I had to learn from bottom up. And yeah, I was getting shit on all the time. It's whack. I don't like, like, Smash is just so chill. That's why I like it so much. I think that's a good sign. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy when we, you mentioned it, that they're, they're finally lifting Nintendo's lifting their stupid, like, I don't know, even, I guess it's like their copyright rules. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they were the one, like, you couldn't, I remember you, you couldn't, couldn't stream, couldn't stream you at couldn't all. Post it and monetize it. Um, like I you had I, to subscribe to like some monetization program yeah. that was like shit. It was like dog shit. It was awful. So many YouTubers were talking about it. I remember, that was like what four years ago I think something like that. It was four years ago when it was really bad. They mm-hmm. kind of changed it. Everybody had hope, but then it just was really bad. But I think it was like January. They just said. They finally realized that it's essentially free advertising when people post videos about their games. Oh my god. So I was like, like 14 getting I, that. Exactly. Like, I was like I could understand. I was like 12 and I was like is it just it's just people saying that you should go play their game. Chugger Conrad, the dude. Um my favorite game of all time, Kid Icarus Uprising. The only reason I've ever I've never about played it. this. So okay. good. It's, I have a 2DS I should. It is I love I heard it's great. I love di- dialogue writing. Probably some of the best dialogue yeah. ever. Um uh like, I would have never known about that game if he hadn't, like, talked about it. And it was the one... T- I was really into him at that time. I would watch every single episode of what he was doing. Mm-hmm. That was the one where I stopped watching because I was like, I want to get this game for myself and see it. Yeah. Like, and that was right... If I remember correctly, that was right when the hit of, like, with the copyright things of, like, we don't want... You have to jo- at, yeah, it, you have to join our stupid program. And I was like, man, I like... Like, it's... I am evidence that, like... It, it, it is works. Advertising. It's yeah. like free advertising that people do willingly. Mm-hmm. I feel bad though because um, there are like some games though where like definitely videos like yeah like, like something like Heavy Rain. I just watched a narrative based of that ones. Yeah, it was like not even narrative based, but like something like something like Metal Gear. That's narrative based, but you got to You got to play Metal Gear Solid to get the full experience. But something like Heavy Rain, where it's just like quick time events. Just, like, press X to pick up the newspaper. I don't need to... I can just watch that and get Visual the same novels, feeling. Right? Visual novels. It's, yeah, novels. it's just, like, a movie with button prompts. Like, Phoenix Wright. I love Phoenix Wright. I've never played a game because... I will when the next one comes out, but, like, yeah. I just watch them all through. Yeah. And you don't... There is no... To me, there is no replay value in those games. Which sucks because Capcom is kind of in a hole. Did like, they release a new Mega Man game? I Mega Man like, 11? I heard it was, like, Luke. Like, it I wasn't heard, bad. Like, it wasn't, like, uh, I Mighty Number no. 9. I didn't hear anything about it. But. My brother got it. He oh, was yeah. like, it's okay. Uh, which is good. I like, the, I like the visual style. I got the demo for it. I love that art style. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I was thinking about, like, um, with my art, I was like, what is my artistic style. inspiration? And it's not a st- I don't know what it's called, style, but, like, where I get my, like, inspirations from. Yeah. And... Bodies, um, I am, like, very particular about how I draw bodies. Uh, hands, I'm not so much, but I'm trying to do better with them. Um, I, I can draw a pretty good hand, um, if I want to, I just don't like it. Um, it's because of, on, honestly enough, it's because of, do you know much about animation? Yeah. yeah draw. Okay. I used to want to be an animator. Um, so. Then Steve, I realized it's pretty much a step above slavery, so. <laughs> yeah, um. My friend Melissa, her sister, is a like credited animator at Cartoon oh. Network now, which is oh, that's what has she worked on? Okay, Ko is what she's credited on. She's like mm-hmm. like an episode creator. So that's oh fuck, that's yeah. so cool. She I probably shouldn't be saying all this, but um, she started she started off uncredited doing cleanup on T Titans Go, and then she went to I think We Bear Bears, and then she is now Okay Ko I believe, which is really cool. That is really that's but awesome. My inspiration comes from. You have you heard about how Steven Universe like their animators work? No, but I mean, you just based on how you're asking me, I can tell it's really bad conditions. <laughs> Not conditions. What it's is really the? Bad hours. So you know how animation works, where you especially nowadays they often send it to like overseas. Yeah. They don't use the reference sheets, so there's no references for like how it's all like I, I don't know the word, but like, like do you know the characters of that show? Like I know what they look like. Okay, I don't know. The tall there's a there's a tall one who's purple. So or, you have a big red. nose. There's a red one that's pearl. Okay. There's one with like an afro that's garnet. Yeah. And then there's a short one with long hair that's amethyst. Okay. All of the characters don't have a set height. It's relative. 
So it's just like if mm. Pearl, Amethyst, and Steven are together, Amethyst is slightly bigger than Steven. Pearl is bigger than both of them, but smaller than Garnet. And like, especially on the early ones, I will call him out. He's the guy who does OKKO, okay and it works for that show. Did not work for this one. Every um, episode with Ian's Jones, Ian Jones Cordy looks like shit. Because there's no references to how the characters are modeled. It was early on in the show. But um, a few of the artists are very particular on how they drew the characters shape-wise. Mm. And I learned from that show how to draw bodies. And then the faces um, I got from, weirdly enough, a music video called Rainbow Connections by Garfunkel and Oates. Some animator, I, like, she draws faces very simple. And that's, I got it from there. Though my eyes are white and her eyes are black. That's cool. Sorry. I don't know why I even talked about that. <laughs> I think a lot of people focus, like, I need to create a style. That, that, as your style is, like, comes net, like, organically. Just, like, how you want to draw something, how you would go about drawing something is, like, your style. Uh, uh, unless you, like, prompted, you say you have to draw this realistically, then, like, just do the, that's, like, an assignment. Like, but if you're an artist, you say, how would I draw this? And then just draw it. And, like, try and develop that. It is really hard, though, to, like, find a style to me. That yeah. took... I don't even... I'm still not comfortable with that as my style. Mm -hmm. But, like, I'm getting there. Or, or, like, Hannah, how you talk about her drawings. I love her style. She was, like... She was literally showing me yeah. that. She was, like, I think I found my style. And I was, like, absolutely. It's so unique. Yeah, that, that, those, like, cartoon drawings that were on your story, those were dope. I, I was so insecure. Because <laughs> I'm just <laughs> That's like... That's funny. I was, she goes like, no! Look at what you do with your bodies. But I'm like, yeah, but yours look like like cartoon characters. And not ugly ones, either. No, the, the, those were really nice. Wow. I love that shit. I, I, eat, I eat up people's... Like, that's... If, if I'm, like, come across as, like, not... Maybe, like, maybe a little, like, obsessive... Over like so, like say your music. Yeah. It's not because I. Um, it's just because compo note is just so like intoxicating, and you just, sure. it just makes you obsessed. You well, should check it out. Whoever's listening to this. Well, we can plug things at the end. <laughs> I actually talked about this with you in the car slightly. I was just I have like a lot of faith in like my friends especially. Yeah. yeah. Our creative endeavors because like I know personally how validating that can be as an artist with. And I'm not trying to roast you, but, like, little to no following. Yeah. It, it, I yeah. mean, it's not like, oh, they don't deserve... You just state in fact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or James, for example, who the competitive Smash brother. Like, I, I'm his cheerleader because, like, he's my friend. Yeah. I know he's good. I want other people to know he's good. Yeah. And, and, and so artists, same thing. No, no, I feel that was like... I, you're talking about that. I was like, that's really cool. I don't know that's why cool. I do it. It's probably because I have some deep-seated emotion or whatever, like, I'm like, oh my god, nobody believes in me. I, I don't know. But I, I'm happy to be that person, even if nobody sees it, like, if, if nobody acknowledged me like that, I'm fine with, like, comforting, like, my favorite band, Greeting Committee. Like, I love my, my not my favorite band, my third favorite band. My other two, they don't need a cheerleader. Florence yeah. is one of the most listened to artists in the country, in the world. Jukebox of Ghosts, they've been around for ten years. Greeting Committee... They have no following, and I want them to be having a following because I think they're really good. Speaking of, uh, he knows who Greeting Committee is. Um, he's yeah. not, like, a big fan or whatever. Not saying, you know. But something that, like, really got to me was, you know that show, um, que I hate that word, Queer Eye? Um, oh, yeah. So Greeting Committee, you've seen me wear the shirt, too, so I think. Um, if not, I could go in my closet and raid it really quickly. So this, where is it, where is it? Oh, it's on Addie's. It's not on their official one. So this was on one of the episodes of the show. That's their shirt. Uh, and one of the dudes is wearing it. That's so cool. That, like, everyone was freaking out. <laughs> it's just like... Is that one of the guys who like hosts Queer Eye? Oh, like, shit. Like, he is. And so I was like... That's he has cool. A, and there's another Snapchat video of her with the dude with the long hair. Like, they've met. Mm -hmm. And, like, they know each other, which is cool. So... And, and cool. that, like, I just, I, I have, like, a lot of, and I know I'm, like, meek about it because it's just, like, it is a little embarrassing, but, like, I just have a lot of faith in my friends. Like, it's not embarrassing. It's cool. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to, like, come off as too strong. I, I, nah. I, yeah. Well, you know. 
But that's why I'm like, and that's why I want, I'm not, I, I, especially now I'm doing other things. I'm not so sure about this now, but I, I do want to interview local musicians at some point because not on here as on, uh, cause I work in radio as well. I want to do it probably through the radio station. I don't know many. Maybe I can ask Todd. <laughs> Todd would probably do it. No, well, that too. But, but I meant, I was like, I, that was like implied, but I meant like more like, you probably, I don't know how well he does the local musician scene here. He, um, a lot, I mean, a lot of people come from Charlotte, so he, he, he knows his way around. Yeah. Unfortunately, Charlotte's music scene is, eh, it's, it's kind of whack. It, it's not as, I, I think Raleigh has a way better music scene, comparatively. To Boone or no, to Charlotte. Charlotte. Um, I, mean, I, I don't know Raleigh's scene. I've, I don't I, even really know Charlotte's scene. But. I only know it because I have a friend. I wonder what's... I haven't talked to her in forever. Her older sister was in... Fuck, I don't remember the name. They were in like an all-girl like rock band from Charlotte. Okay. They performed at like Pride or whatever. So they, they kind of have been around. And like through the girl, the sister, the younger sister, I like got to know some local musicians. Not personally, like if they were, if they said, like if they were, it was like a one-time thing. So if they were mm-hmm. like, hey, do you remember Peter Cooper? And they're like, who? <laughs> that kid with like the pasty face. I hadn't had facial hair. My hair wasn't dyed. It was greasy and gross. <laughs> I was a mess. Of high greasy Italian. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call me out. Italians, we. We're, bro- we're both Italian. Oh, uh, yeah. Pizza. But neither one of us have Italian last names. Yeah, that's true. I mean, my mother's last name is D. My mother's is, yeah. <laughs> she she was jokes. She'd be like, yeah. I, maybe I don't want to put her name out there. I'm not gonna say her first name, but I said her last name, which is the easier one to find. But she was like, yeah. No one ever has our last name. And then when I was in high school, like even she's from New York City. She was like, no, never met another. And then when she was in high school, she was like, yeah. And then I met a girl not only with her last name, but she had the same first name as oh, her as well. So weird. Yeah. I think that she's like, I found her on Facebook. <laughs> and she's like, I know it's her because no one has the same name as me. <laughs> it's it's, it's so funny. cute. It's weird. Ooh. But I was like really emo about my family. <laughs> oh, I almost changed my name legally because I was just like, you know, I don't like my last name that much. Now I'm cool with it. Uh, but I was going to take my grandmother's maiden name because it's very pretty. Ooh. Not going to put not gonna put that out uh. there because I'm scared that Ooh. if I do get like popular one day, I shouldn't have said my mother's last name already because, like, her maiden name, like, thank God it's none of my, like, social security passwords. Yeah, yeah. What's your mother's maiden name? Uh, <laughs> I might even actually blank that out um, because I kind of don't want her name out there now. <laughs> because, like, I, you know, it's like, a, I'm sure I say, oh, it's not one of the passwords, but I'm sure I have, like, some email where it's, like, what's your mother's maiden name? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. No, it's funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have one more thing to talk about, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. I'm just, you're fine. Dara was texting me, she said that they tried to make Neil pay $30 to get into a beeper. What? Yeah. Does he, well, I can't right now, but I was like, does he need Wait, a ride? Maybe a beeper to the party. To the party, they, but that's still, that's way overpriced. Yeah. 15 is the max I'd ever pay, and that's not happening either. It's 10 yeah, normally. Like that. Uh, money is the... One dollar is the maximum I'd pay. <laughs> I've been to a party where the cover charge is like five. I uh, yeah. I mean, I've been to shows. Every show is the cover charge is five. Wait, but oh, but well, you don't perform that often. If yeah. you perform, you get it for free, right? Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you get you get you get paid if you perform. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> we'll take it out of your salary. <laughs> I want to talk about. I mean, it's. I know it's like not a fun thing to talk about, but I love hearing about people's relationships. You don't have to like go oh, into detail. With Dara. Yeah, yeah. Adara is the. Sweetest little, sweetest little thing. No, she's, she's so sweet. She's awesome. Uh, I met her when yeah, she... Yeah, it's really easy going with her right now. That's good. Um, yeah, stark break from my last relationship. We don't have to talk about that. You can talk I, about I, I know, I'll just say for... It's not like a painful for me to talk no, about No, but you, I just meant... I mean, I'm private. just saying, like, she kind of was, like, very clingy. And Dara is just, oh, dude. It's like, it's been an, it's been like an adjustment to... <laughs> Not to being in like an easygoing relationship because I, I was in like with my ex girlfriend for like four years and it was just oh, like yeah. she was very clingy and shit and like I, it's just very easygoing I, right now. Are you guys like with your ex like you're just like okay though or is it? Oh, it, I thought we were, but apparently she like fucking hates me now. Well, according to um, my good friend Connor, 
whose girlfriend is good friends with my ex-girlfriend, and they went to visit her for her birthday. And <laughs> initially we left on good terms, but apparently Connor said it was really annoying because she wouldn't shut up about me. <laughs> I remember you told me before you were dating Dara, but like you were talking with Dara. You yeah. were like, I think it was, we hung out over what, Christmas break? Yeah. And then you were like, yeah, we were performing, and Dara came down to see me, but my ex was also there. Like, I think you said while I was performing, I saw them talking together. Yeah, they were talking, not just while I was performing, they were talking the whole night. I barely got to talk to them. And you were like, fuck. I was like, uh, yeah, for real. Because you had broken up with her at that point. Yeah. She was just trying to be involved in my life, because I think she took Let's Still Be Friends as I want to still be as involved in your life as I was when we were dating. Yeah. And I was like, that's not what I want. I don't know how it works personally, but I don't think I could be like that. Just, I mean, maybe four years, but, but like, I don't think, I don't think I it was go back. Just my mindset making it easier. Just like, I don't want to completely just cut her off, cut her off after being with her for so long. But unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. At least I have Dara. Yeah. I, well, at, at least you have Dara. That was, I, yeah, <laughs> that was the no, worst there, way there to is, it. There's awesome. No, cool. I like her. I don't, she, um, my friend um, is dating this new dude, and we were peeping last night, and, and like, we FaceTimed him. And yeah. I said, I was like, you have a friendly face. And he, she was like, why did you say that? I was like, he just has he a does. face that's very approachable. Dara has this, not the same face, but, like, the same, she just looks like Vibe, someone yeah. who you could just talk to for no, whatever. And she's for like, real. Yeah. And people pick up on that, like, my sweetmate Kevin talks to I just, her. I was having lunch like, with him today. Really? Yeah, it was weird. Dude, I I love him. He is. He's very cool. He's like the coolest fucking guy. <laughs> he's he's just he's just a great guy all, all around. But he was like talking to Dara about like his problems trying to get a girlfriend, and uh. it was just like, it wasn't like incel talk. It was just no, like, no, 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 no. Like, oh, I like this girl, but I don't know what to do. And I was he was just talking to Dara about it. I was like, it's funny. Dara, she she very much does have that kind of energy that you could just like talk to her about stuff. Uh, yeah, I I I almost want to. You know. Um, I wanted to do, um, back when I still considered this an interview show, when I was doing, like, I call it the demo podcast with my old thing. I had, like, a few episodes recorded. One of them, one of them corrupted, one of them I never published, and there's only one of them with my friend Joe. Um, when I was still considering an interview thing, I was considering Dara, and I still might want to yeah. just talk to her. I like not having, I, I like having, like, the most minimal connection to someone and then doing this. Yeah, that, I can imagine that would be really Really fun. I don't know shit about Dara. Yeah. I know she's she had like um it's a little hard to remember, but her hair wasn't always black. It was like right? hey, it, was it was like pink blonde for a while. When I first met her it was blonde. Uh and then she changed to pink and then she dyed it black. Because when it was like pinkish when we went sledding that yeah, one time. Yeah. And I was like, What's up, Dara? And I was like, I have to go. <laughs> when you Oh my god, and when you use your portfolio <laughs> yeah. like it sled, it I really, got a new one. <laughs> Good, because that thing was tarnished. Like it was ruined. I lost it. Dude, I don't know <laughs> what? Where, I don't know where it went. <laughs> Do you remember um the guy, fucking legend, where he took? Because at that point there was like local elections had just finished. Yeah. And he took up the the, the yeah. what are they called? The campaign sign. Yeah. yeah. And he made a sled out of it. That was funny. Apparently, like that woman, that representative, my editor in chief. Hated so I sent the picture of, of it and he's like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, you're talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, I was like, I didn't I wasn't trying to like spark like a yeah fuck her sort of thing. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Um, that's so that is weird though. Okay, um, huh? I I had another question but I don't remember it. It was like the last thing. All right, well, this isn't the normally I ended on this, but I'm sure I'll remember the question I wanted to ask. But, okay, uh, I speak in bow ties so like i'll go from like a big thing and then i'll remember something else and then i'll remember the small detail i'll go back to the second thing here and then go back to the big thing so i've never heard that speaking in bow ties or hour it's more like hourglasses Hour, okay but yes i because that's how i talk i say a lot but <laughs> the question is i i want to start asking at the end of every podcast is like and you seem more assured with yourself so i like that okay. is like do you think you're an interesting person if someone goes are you interesting Hmm. <laughs> uh, that's such a weird question to answer without sounding like vain. Potty. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I am a pretty interesting person. I think that's like not a bad thing. Yeah, I like you know when you do like icebreakers in your class and people they're like, you gotta say fun fact about yourself. Mm -hmm. And you, these people are like, um, like my favorite colors 
orange. That's their interesting well, fact. Or like, it's like, I broke my elbow. Yeah, like, skiing. you can't think of one interesting thing about your life. Like, I feel like everybody has at least, like, one or two things that are, like, pretty interesting that they could say about themselves. But like, they're my, just afraid. Maybe. No. Or, like, I don't know, some people just strike me as just, like, boring people. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, I agree. Uh, to an extent, but, like, my whole purpose, even before, when it was still an interview thing, was, like, my whole, one of my main goals was, like, almost, like, as if this was a huge audience listening, my goal was to show that, like, everyone is interesting. Yeah. And I don't like when people tell me, like, I don't find myself as an interesting person. I'm like, well, especially, I know you well enough to either think you have an interesting personality and want to know more about you, or know enough about you to say you're interesting, and you're both. Yeah. Um, so... It makes me frustrated, like, it does make me frustrated, though, like, especially now that I've, I've gotten a lot more confident in myself, uh, when, when we have those stupid icebreakers in classes, or, like, at the beginning of the year when we all live in a hall, they're like, um, I, my favorite color is green, I'm from Apex, North Carolina, and I'm like, dude, like, you can't say, like, for me, it's like, you know, I've done stand-up comedy, I run a radio show, uh, well, not a radio show, I run a podcast, um, Fucking, I have met uh, my favorite band twice. Dude, you know, like, a fact about Shovel Knight that only, like, ten other people know. But no one would know, like... like I'm, that's like, interesting, like... I was a small te- I witnessed the, the development of one part of yeah. a video game is not that cool. I think it's pretty cool. It's interesting to the right person. Like, like millions of people played Shovel Knight, and everybody's like, I'm the biggest fan of Shovel Knight. But, like, <laughs> you've got, like, Stand this... Shovel Knight. You've got, like, this random fact that just like I love no one knows I love random facts I yeah. am the king of random if you like the king of random YouTube channel the king of if I can tell you anything about popular 2014 YouTube that year Dude. I don't know why me fucking YouTube <laughs> I can talk about YouTube now N- not so much for me yeah because YouTube like 2014 was the peak of YouTube and then as soon as that year ended, it started getting, like, turning into a huge business. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know who... You know who Superwoman is, right? Yes. I don't like her. I don't like her either. Did you hear what she just got? No. She just AIDS? got the... Jesus. <laughs> What'd she get? It might still be on, on my, my Twitter stories. Um, like, you know, Twitter has, like, news stories. Twitter has stories? Yes. Like, news stories. Oh. I was like... Why does every social media have those stories? Fucking, I was, like, upset. Let me, if it's not here, I'm gonna give up and just say it. But I kind of would like to show it as well. Okay, yeah, it's not here. Okay, she is getting, like, a late-night TV show. Like, TV show. Uh, it's just a marketing thing. Like Carson Daly is no longer hosting his show, and she yeah, has a Carson show. Daly. The dude who runs late, like, like, the show that goes on, like, 145 in the morning. Late, the Late Late Show, I think this is. That's, no, that's James Corden. Oh, well, yeah. hers is, like, now called, like, a, Up a Little Late with Lily Singh. And I'm just like, bitch. No. She's got that kind of humor where she's like, we'll say something loud and that will be the joke. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. It's like, really? Really? Oh. Then again, I can't really talk shit because, like, I am, I have basic YouTube humor sometimes and I'll laugh at, like, basic, you know, like. The, I mean, I laugh at dumb shit. But I'm talking about, like, the editing trend. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Like, the, the, a lot of the humor isn't that they're a funny person. They just edit things. Like, they'll zoom in. When nah. It's, it's it, it, there is a, there's a line where it's, like, lazy yeah. and Like funny. Emma Chamberlain. That's, it's just not funny at she's all. She's the basic form of that. Curtis yeah. Connor, he's funny. If you don't know who he is. Uh, Curtis Connor, he's, I'm not subscribed to him, which is so sad. But he does a lot of editing gags, but he's also very funny. And mm-hmm. with her, I'm just frustrated because I'm like, it's like the pinnacle. Well, no, the pinnacle example was Will Smith and YouTube Rewind. Yeah, yeah, it's rewind it's time. It's rewind time. <laughs> um, but it's like I don't like, like, sh- I don't want to say she's representing the YouTube community, but she is. And she is, and that's sh- what people are gonna think YouTube is. She said some like inflammatory, dumbass things. I just don't think like I get it, but like it's like the safest option you can make. And it's, it's a YouTube uh, channel. God, there's even safer options, though. I'm, I'm just, she's just not. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is her calling. Maybe. Maybe yeah. she's an amazing late night talk show host. 
But I mean, I'd watch an episode. But I I don't even like as a format. I don't really like the, the late night talk show. Me neither. Yeah. My friend Joe wants to be one so badly, and I, yeah. I, I'm rooting for him. If he gets it, I'd be like, I'd watch the shit out of that every fucking day. But uh, especially if something if you can do something new with it and garner my interest again. Yeah. Um, I remember speaking of 2014 YouTube. I think this was 2015. Do you remember Daily Grace, Grace Helbig? Yeah. Did you know she had a TV show? No. She did. It ran one season. I don't remember what it was called, and I remember enjoying it. But I don't. I mean, what channel was it on? I don't even remember. I do, it was. I didn't watch. I watched like pirated versions of it online. So, um, I, I can't. Grace Helbig TV show. Helbig TV show. Like, and that was before. Like, like, I don't really find her funny anymore. And she kind of unfortunately faded into obscurity. Yeah. The Grace Helbig show, twenty fifteen. It aired. It had good reviews. It was on E. E. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, I don't know, like. It, it makes me upset that, like, old people, old people, but, like, old YouTube kind of disintegrated. Yeah, dude, Smosh just got sold. Yeah, now it's, like, BuzzFeed humor. Yeah. Uh, every blank ever, I'm like, that's the only thing I see with Smosh now. I'm just like... Well, I mean, fucking Anthony left it a couple years ago. It was already, like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. but... Uh, well, then there's, like, but then there's, like, uh, pinnacle examples, like, I really like Jenna Marbles. Yeah, Jenna Marbles is still good. She and I, she I still ha- think she's funny. She's like changed, but she yeah, hasn't changed. She's, she's kind of moved with like how like the more like the more like traditional YouTubers like the H three scene and like PewDiePie and all those people. She's still a personality. She's, she's yeah, she's kind of moved with that kind of crowd, but she's maintained her mainstream appeal, which is really cool. I I I, I genuinely like. She's the only I not even Shane Dawson. Because I stopped watching him for a good bit, and I stopped watching him again lately. But um, uh, he takes himself too seriously. Like calling his series documentary series, uh, it's called YouTube videos. I I I'm not gonna uh, lie, you know some people watch reality TV as yeah. like their guilty pleasure. Dude, YouTube drama is my shit. Oh, yeah, mine too. Dude, I watched all of Shane Dawson's series about Jake Paul. I got and, bored. And then I watched Nerd City's analyses of the Jake Ew. Paul series. Nerd City's an awesome he YouTube is. channel. I know Nerd, he is, yeah. Yeah, dude, he's he's so good. I love Nerd City. I That was what made me stop watching him again. Was Nerd City? No, no, the Jake Paul series. I was oh, like, really? this is boring. It I was, was like, pretty boring. It was like four <laughs> episodes in, I'm like, we still haven't met him. Yeah, dude, for real. It was boring as fuck, but I was like, I gotta watch it. Uh, I, I, what if I miss out on whatever they talk about on the next uh, insert podcast? I, I have followed him for a very long time. So yeah. I'm talking like... Yeah, he's old school YouTube. Like 2012, I think, yeah. when I started watching him. So I've been through all of the scandals. <laughs> he was, I'm not kidding, um, he was the person who introduced me into podcasting. So like mm-hmm. this is like, I do credit him with like a lot. But um, he... I remember him specifically saying, I think it might have been in like an interview or something. He said like, I am tired of YouTube. Like he had gone into like this whole thing of like microwaving Barbie dolls and shit like that. You remember? Yeah. And he was like, I was tired of it because like I was doing the, I was doing content that I knew would get attention or, and then it started not getting attention. Like his video started tanking, but I was doing content that I knew would get attention for the audience and not what I wanted to do. I was doing it to save money, to get a name, so I could eventually cross over into television. And then he was like, fuck it. Well, he said, like, fuck it. I'm going to do what I want to do on TV, on YouTube. Yeah. And to an extent, I think it works. To an extent, I mean, clearly... Dude, if he was on TV, it wouldn't work. But to, to an extent, I'm getting, like, I think it works as... YouTube. His media, like, yeah. like I'm like, okay, I see it, but, I to another extent, I mean, clearly he has all the views. He's, he's I'm fucking. There's always like news. There's only news stories about it. Yeah. But to me, I'm like, I don't think he changed. I I think he's doing again. He has that someone called it wig t cis humor, like how he speaks. What do you mean? He's like, oh wig snatched. Give me the t cis. Oh yeah. And and they're calling it like I, someone was like. It just sounds like he's, like, trying too hard. And maybe that is his sort of humor. I, I mean, sometimes I'd, like, laugh at that. But, or um, the conspiracy theory is, like, he's trying too hard. 
And it broke my heart because I was like, I thought with that Tanemojo series, yeah, I thought he did his best. Like, I thought that Jeffree Star series, I thought that was him at his most genuine. And then he started capitalizing specifically off of those two series, and he was influenced by the huge amount of attention. So he does his stupid Jake Paul series. He does his conspiracy theory series, which I, I don't know. Yeah. I, no, that is, I feel you, kind of lost the soul. Because the Tanamagi shit was... That was some good stuff. It was good. I mean, she probably was, like, faking half that shit. Oh, she w- totally yeah. was. Yeah, but it was good. It was drama. drama. It was just fucking... It's just entertainment. It, it was it's abso- just stupid entertainment. Absolute garbage. But, like, it worked. Because yeah. I didn't think he was doing garbage. Like, I didn't. I was like... And I still don't. I think that's a good series. Like, yeah. for what it's worth. I, I think mean, it's decent. I, I'm not, like, into Shane Dawson. I just liked... His series on Tanamagu. I, I'm into following the, especially the people from like 2014. Yeah, I'm into following them, like the Fine Brothers. <laughs> they, I always watch one. Total sellouts. sellouts, dude. They tried to copyright the word react. <laughs> that made me so okay. It made everyone <laughs> angry. Um, I know this girl actually down the hall who surprisingly knew what this was. So one of the reasons why I know so much about I will we will stop talking I, I will try to end this soon I'm I just right. I'm talking a lot because um, so 2014 YouTube one of the reasons why I know so much about it is because the Fine Brothers had this web show called My Music mm-hmm. fucking way ahead of its time I still think it's ahead of its time um, it wasn't influenced by like like clean humor sort of thing that YouTube's trying to embrace and whatever it was 2014 so YouTube had it become a company yet like yeah. it wasn't a powerhouse it still was but um they were like enabling their creators and so it was a web show that was fucking hilarious i'm not going to explain the concept because it's too much but they had a grace helbig was like a main character mm-hmm. not as grace helbig she was a character um jack's films before he was popular Do you know what that is right yeah before yeah, he jack's was popular films. really he like had stagnated Who, is this fine rose they did this it was so good ahead of its time Fucking, um, and now I, I'm like looking at what they did and I'm just like, like they, they made that movie that was awful. <laughs> Fuck the prom. Fuck the, no, it wasn't, F it the was prom. F the prom. <laughs> and so bad. And it broke my heart. Cause I'm, and then they make like all of their shit is like thumbnail, you know, everyone's wide eyed yeah. and screaming in a thumbnail and, and, and it's reacting to like memes. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm so. It makes money. I'm. Do you remember Video Game High School? Yes. Fucking Freddie Wong. What's he doing now? Nothing. Yeah, I think he does, like... No, he doesn't do anything on YouTube. He does, like, effects works. Good for and, him. Like, the music. Yeah, he actually does something. He broke YouTube. out. Yeah. I know. I think he always did it, but I think he did YouTube on the side, but it's, like, his main gig now because YouTube doesn't really support short-form content anymore. That's why animators don't really do anything on YouTube anymore. Good. Like, like, com- like people like Psychic Pebbles who would, like... Do like complex animation. Like th- there's some animators like odd ones out, but like he doesn't do fi- like mouth animations. He does animatics. Yeah, he, that 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 yeah animatics. A lot of animatics are popular now, but that use like the same assets and the same like characters and stuff and backgrounds. Something like Psychic Pebbles, he did like a whole like cartoon series. At this, really? Like, yeah. I didn't even know that. I don't know who he is. You know who Psychic Pebbles yeah. is? Yeah. He's. I told you. I fucking I, love Zach Adele. I know, like, a lot. I don't watch them, but yeah. I know who these people are. Just yeah. like Shane Dawson for you, I guess. Uh, fuck, like, the animation community on YouTube. Like, that whole scene, like, Oni, or Oni. My roommate watches him. Oni, yeah. Oni plays. Yeah, yeah, they all do that shit now, which is cool, because they're all really funny people. But, like, it just makes me sad, because they don't do animation anymore. At least not that much. And, like, one could argue, oh, they're just transitioning from their interests, but at the other time, you're like, well, the reason why they might is because they... They can't support themselves. They weren't supported. Mm -hmm. It does... It does concern me getting into a media degree uh, like that, because, unfortunately, media, especially, is always changing. Yeah. On what content it is. And and I'm glad podcasting has, like, found its niche. And it is a profitable uh, niche, actually. But, um, um, go to Wix.com if you don't need a domain website or... <laughs> what are you talking about? Just getting sponsors. <laughs> oh, fuck <Yeah>. off. <laughs> I used to... Oh, Quip, my... Quip is the greatest toothbrush... Do you have Quip? Yeah. Right there. Dude, that's you're toothbrush. ready. You're getting that sponsor. Quip, Tell can you Qu- sponsor me? I love Quip your toothbrushes. <laughs> I, I don't have any listeners. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so like it is concerning me as a, as a media person. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, I'm in radio, and like, I'm not trying to put it on blast, but radio is definitely not as profitable as it once Dude, was. Video killed the radio star. That's my bio on Instagram. It's <laughs> really, I'm, I'm bringing the radio star back to life, <laughs> and on Twitter. That's funny. Um, I love that song. It's a great song. Compano covered it. No way. Show. At our last show, their show in January, we, we covered it. Ah. Oh. Postmodern Jukebox covered it like a Queen song. Fuck oh, dude, me. Dope. Sorry. I've been into... I got back into Postmodern Jukebox uh, mm-hmm. a few days ago, and and apparently they covered that song, and I was like... That's sick. They did right, it the, for Bohemian Rhapsody. The Presidents of the United States of America. Do you know that band? Yeah. They did the Peaches song. Do you know that song? Peaches. Millions of Peaches. Yes. Peaches. They, they did that. They covered that song, too. They have a really good cover of it. Who else covered it? <laughs> um, some metal band. Yeah, uh, I don't. Alli- Alice in Chains, what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, it was Alice in Chains. Okay. A- Alice in Chains, <laughs> not Listen. Alice in Chains. Alice in Chains. It's like a name, yeah. like Alice in Alice Space in, Chains. Yeah. Okay. I bet there's a person named that. Some fucking underground receptionist. Like so, no, I bet like someone, fuck, some band probably thought they were hilarious. Oh hell Naming yeah! themselves Alice, Alice in, in Chains. Chains. Oh god, I I would never like that's one thing I was like if I was in music, I'm not doing a, like a parody name. Yeah, the, a lot of bands do that. It's kind of cringy. Like there was this really awesome math rock band who, they they were from Virginia I think, but they they came to Boone, that they were called Colin Phils, and I was like they were awesome musicians, but that name sucks. Yeah, I should be. I could be the best if professional career band maker name. Me, I got that. <laughs> Colin Phils. Colin uh, Phils. Yeah. Instead of Phil Collins. I don't. Okay. We should wrap this up. We wrap it up? Uh, well, unless you have anything else to say. I mean... No, I, we can wrap it up. Okay, I want... First of all, let's plug your information. Let's plug... Componote on Spotify. You Componote on Spotify. Apple Music. Fucking... Places where you're like Bandcamp. We're signed to a indie label called Who Knows Records. Yeah. We're based in Charlotte. Todd runs it, right? Todd, yeah. My, our, my singer, guitar player, Todd Jordan, runs it. And, yeah. Check us out. And for me, uh, I am Sauerkraut on Twitter. No, it's, it's Sour, like Sour Candy, Kraut, K-R-O-W-T. I literally did that in sign language. That was K R O W T. Why did I do that? Um, Sauerkraut on Twitter and Instagram. And then I mentioned, oh yeah, my drawings. I'm doing drawings and my posting my lyric poetry sometime. Sometime. Uh, Peber underscore draws. Or Peter, Peber underscore art. But I might just change it to Peber underscore draws. <laughs> Great, because I kind of like that more. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. Though. Peber. Okay. Um, I'm Cameron. Yeah. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, and um, thank you for listening. Uh, I don't have to make any edits except for one, so that's good. Well, two, I'm definitely making a few edits, actually. Okay. Um, well, yes, thank you for joining. I'm, I'm excited. No problem. I'm excited. I, this is fun. My next guest, hopefully, will be um, my friend. I mentioned her earlier, my friend, the one who I drew, Felicia. She is a concert goer extraordinaire. She's heard that way too many times. I bet. She, apparently, if I remember correctly, the number right now is like 28 concerts she's been to. She's Paramore's biggest fan. Look forward to that. I am going to try and schedule her for next Saturday's recording. So it'll probably be published. This episode will probably be up this Wednesday. And Felicia's will probably be up this when, uh, that Wednesday after. Uh, thank you all for listening. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. <laughs>